everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Spahnauer and Theo Ash. We're back with some more post-preseason analysis coming on the heels of we just finished watching Saints Chargers. Got to see some Jake Hayner action. That was fun. But, but before we get into all the games that we're going to talk about, all these young quarterbacks and some other guys we liked, Matt, Theo, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing well. I, I've got an apartment. My homeless era is almost over. There's nothing in the apartment besides a bunch of loose, like random objects that I own scattered about at the moment because it came unfurnished. So I don't have a couch. I don't have a bed. I don't have mm. I, I don't have Wi-Fi. I don't have shit in there. So it's more I, I've got two empty rooms that I could <laughs> that would be a, a roof over my head if I really, really needed it. But yeah. maybe by the next episode, you can expect to get a look at the new, the new place. Hey, can we get a, can we get an apartment tour on the stay hot TikTok? Is that and when it's that ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The address drop. Who's going to dox it's, himself? It's nearby. <laughs> you're closer than you think (laughs) yeah um i like the idea of like having an apartment but only keeping like five or six things in there no furniture just a room like a a little home base like or not even a home base just like storage (laughs) but um i hope it has good ac because my my room currently does not have good ac it's like 83 in here uh, so I'm leaning back for this episode. I'm trying to chill out I got and beat you. the heat. It's when rough, I, but outside I, of that, I'm doing good. I was helping Panther my girlfriend stuff. move in mm-hmm. um, yesterday, and when we get there, the apartment is like 85 degrees upstairs. It's like cool downstairs, it's like a normal temperature. We get upstairs, we're like, why is it so hot in here? And her roommate moved in the day before, so we're like, did you not just think to turn down the (laughs) turn down the thermostat so we're out there we're up there cooking for like eight hours until the the ac really kicked in but hey my my old house is from like it was built in like 1890 (laughs) so it doesn't have central air yeah so yeah yeah college was nice because i got central air everywhere i lived but now i'm back living in old places uh-huh. where it's a struggle um to to cool the place down or heat the place up it's uh i missed it it's a challenge it's uh <laughs> go back to college it's a hurdle get you get your degree yeah, so we can make we can make fun of matt together <laughs> i can go back to college but i can't go back to college housing no matter how temperature controlled it is so uh i'll just have to grip my teeth and deal with it although it does have like an ac unit in there like a window one but Mm -hmm. it's not quite big enough for the amount of space that i have which is a good and bad thing football football Football, yes we got we got a we got a little bit of a college football snippet from matt today (laughs) in our text group chat about what I told you about my flag football team was zero and six, and we're oh. gonna we have the playoffs next week. He's like, this is how college football is gonna be next year. Right, that's not right, quite right. the football. That's not quite the the football reference that I think Matt was talking about. What qu- no. what quarterback do we want to talk about first? Which right. young which one, young buck? Probably Bryce Young. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Hey Matt, I'll let you go first since they're your Panthers. You got to see Bryce Young lead an actual. They're not drive. winning that How division. <laughs> They're not winning that division. What? Really. That offensive line is horrible. I don't. It's I mean, worse the offensive line it's the of the preseason. Receivers. It's. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Right now, the offensive line looks really <laughs> awful. Um, you know, Icky looks like dog shit. Um. I don't have the all 22, so I'd love to tell you if, if dudes are getting open down the field or not. I'm assuming no, but Bryce is running for his life like almost every single play. It's totally ridiculous. And I, I saw Jamar Chase drop like five passes and then be great in the regular season, so I don't trust preseason. But that 
if he hadn't done that, I would totally believe the offensive line is just going to be terrible. And really, I mean, we'll see, I guess. Uh, Bryce himself looked good, though. I mean, he's obviously very calm under pressure, uh, at least as much as he can be. I mean, how many guys just aren't willing or able to step up through a pocket like he is or when they they kind of roll out of the pocket, it's I'm not looking downfield anymore. I just want to run it. It's none of that for Bryce. I mean, that Thielen completion he almost had where he scrambled way out was was awesome and whatnot. Uh, and he's obviously, you know, as quick as he can be getting the ball out. But my major takeaway is that he's not a, a total panicker. And even if he was, he's in a situation where I don't know if I could blame him for being one. I'm very worried about the Panthers, though. The offensive line's got to get it together, like, right now. Yeah, and Equanu last year was pretty bad in the preseason. And then as the year went on, he seemed to get stronger mm-hmm. and stronger and stronger. You would hope that he was building, that he would build off the end of last season and like continue to grow and like look great by now. Maybe it'll be a similar situation where like early on he's a little rough. And then as the year goes on, he gets stronger just like last season. But eventually he's got a just be good from right beginning to end and that beginning even in preseason like it's a rehearsal but you can't get your quarterback killed in in preseason that means you won't have him for any regular season game so yeah he's definitely got to play better Dexter Lawrence man he was oh my, oh my god Bradley Bozeman cannot handle him like whatsoever I mean it was it was <laughs> poor dude like it was it was ridiculous not a lot of centers can and if you want a sleeper like defensive player of the like a deep d i don't know what his odds are but he's someone that like it has gotten to the point you look at his pressure numbers from the nose alignment last year and just how dominant he was compared to every other interior rusher who plays his role and what he did to the panthers last night i'm thinking like maybe you could make the argument that he could be a defensive player of the year candidate if he's like five times as good as any other nose tackle from as a pass rusher. And he, Hey, I mean, if Chris Jones doesn't play this year and Chris Jones, I hope will be playing this year, but I mean, I think that Chris Jones deserved it last year. It's, it's really tough to deal with pressure instantly up the middle. Um, and it's always good at like even last year, Nick Bosa had a great year. Chris Jones had a great year. The edge production trumps the interior defensive line production. So it would be a pretty big long shot, but man, Dexter Lawrence looked really sharp, really powerful against the starting uh, Panthers offensive line. And I, that thought just crossed my mind is like, he's just so much better than everyone else at his, not as his position at as defensive tackle, but his position as someone who primarily lines up over the center as a nose tackle. So that's that's a little bonus tip yeah. for you. And I, I think I saw something about like the centers he's playing this year. The lineup is not very strong, and he doesn't play like a bunch of top tier centers. I forget who posted about that. I'm sorry, uh, but who knows? Maybe the production will be really good because of it. Overall, though, have not been impressed by the Panthers. Bad. Bad. I don't yeah, know how much there is to say about great, Bryce. But I really liked what like Bryce. One. I I have a little bit to say about Bryce Young. I think that he's been super impressive. Honestly, I, I as impressive as you can be in these two games. The first game you saw how chilly was back there, getting the ball out of his hands and taking taking hits. But man, the, even the field goal drive that he had in the last game, I thought was really good, top to bottom. There was a thirty six or a third and six. There was pressure right in his face, interior pressure, and that's when you start to worry about the height concerns with him. Uh, But he had a really high release point, was able to get it out accurately over a defensive tackle and hit Thielen on an out route. I really like that. Um, There was a play to Hayden Hurst. I believe it was called back, but he hit it nonetheless. It was in the red zone or or just outside the red zone. It was um, second and long or third and long. And he stood in there, again, interior pressure and was able to rip a pass deep outside the numbers and make it. I think it would have been like fourth and two, fourth and three. So couldn't quite pick up the first down, but still a a really good throw from the pocket regardless. And then there was a throw that you mentioned and I talked about on TikTok to Thielen where uh, I think it was Jihad Ward lined up offsides. He stood in in there, like trying to get it down the field. 
again, we don't have the all 22 yet for that. So who knows if anybody was open and he missed something, I'm going to assume no, because Bryce Young is usually pretty good at that kind of thing. Uh, and then there's pressure behind him. He's able to sense it without seeing it. Just kind of yeah. that uncanny ability, make the guy miss. He slips, he gets back up, makes another guy miss. And then after that, he's not like throwing away, like, Oh man, I survived. I'm throwing away. He, he rolls out, he directs traffic and then makes a throw to Thielen that, wasn't caught, but I was impressed with the placement. It was over the shoulder of the of the corner towards the sideline. Thielen was able to make a diving attempt, and uh, it brushed right by his fingertips and fell incomplete. And even though it was incomplete, I thought given the circumstances, the placement was all right. You know, if he can freaking miss, off, that's like that's a pretty good spot to miss. <laughs> there's a difference between missing by a mile and missing by three inches. Right. And if you're missing on that type, like the degree of difficulty is high and you're, you're off by one or two inches and maybe even a better receiver could have made a play on it. Like to me, that means you're going to hit it a couple times over the course of the season. Yeah. And yeah, he's, he's got the quick release. He can show that he can hang in there. He, he was able to like the twitchiness really translated on that play. Like it's really stark when you see it. It's like, man, that's a, a tough guy to track down. So yeah, the, the supporting cast is weak, but I think that Bryce is can be an elevator. I do. I think that he's shown the ability to the the raw tools and traits to to survive in the league. So that's good. And then the Panthers offense, it's wild. It's a gonna be a weird offense. Um, with all the condensed formations, Thielen and Mingo are basically in tight end alignment alignments. Mm-hmm. There there is a lot of under center. It's it's really bizarre. I would take the under on any Bryce Young rushing prop with the amount that they went under center that we saw him. There's not a lot of this Miles Sanders fantasy production is going to be <laughs> glorious. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see that. Yeah, it's it was a lot of Chuba like <laughs> running between the middle and a lot of um, just weird weirdness with how they use the wide receivers inserting into the blocking scheme, whether it be them folding in, you know, these. Iki Aquanu, like maybe jumping outside and leaving the the end unblocked, and then Mingo will come in and crack him, and then like between that, that's where the running play is designed to go. Oh, it's it asks a lot of the receivers in blocking. There's a lot of eleven personnel, like looks you'd expect from a tight end, like twelve personnel, but it's it's Mingo instead, and it's all pretty condensed stuff. And I I thought that that was a pretty not a lot of teams doing that in the league like under center 11 personnel Thielen and mm-hmm. Mingo blocking all the time it feels like so just a weird team build a weird offense a weird quarterback but um it, it could be a little bit rough because of the supporting cast but I I, I really do think they've yeah. got a guy in I, I think it would be kind of hard to run a normal offense like a, a normal offense by today's standards with that supporting cast because you don't have the receivers to really stretch. Well, they the built for, it, you know, like they could have gone out like, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, done something else. Maybe there's a different trade they could have done and kept DJ Moore or, or something like that. Like they had their choice to go any direction with it. And they went in a really weird one with <laughs> Bryce and, and Mingo and Sanders. It's, it's, it's going to be it's different it's it's very different i think so i don't i'm not saying that it's good or bad really i i think with the supporting cast it's not great but is the philosophy good or bad i i don't know i i could get i could definitely see the vision with mingo being using him as almost like that pseudo tight end who he had a nice play where he was able to catch a comeback route break a tackle and rush Mm -hmm. for a couple more yards so you know he's more dynamic than your typical tight end so if you can get him to get the blocking aspect down which is what he did at Ole miss like he could be an intriguing piece. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt to hear them out. But yeah, it's... I am willing to hear them out. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. It's like... Yeah, I don't know. It'll it'll be an interesting year for the Panthers, but I, I don't think they need to be like they don't need to be win now, right now, anyway. Right? They don't. Cause... But they do need to be like, don't get Bryce killed. Like. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> they can get through the season and suck. But, 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 it's like, but the, just be- don't get the benefit Bryce of Bryce is that he's also pretty good at not getting himself killed. So I don't know, man. He stands in there and takes <laughs> some pretty big hits. I like to his credit. And also yeah. it like we saw it last week. He stood in there and got walloped. And yeah, yeah I, I think that he he's good at 
on the run at like making people miss but sometimes you know he can be brave yeah and, and he's good at avoiding sacks but at avoiding hits maybe not yeah maybe not you know he good. Gets rid he's of not the, as good at he Richardson. gets rid of the football but sometimes that that results in a big hit for him but uh yeah, yeah it's just mission keep bryce alive really <laughs> is the logo or the motto for the panthers this year he'll be fine yeah but <laughs> <laughs> Matt's got faith, so that Icky he will to... get better. I do think that Icky will get better as the season goes on, like yeah. what happened last year. That is my expectation. Yeah, the offensive line was not nearly this bad, like at the end of last year. So no. I, I would be shocked if it looked like this all year. But they are capable of playing better. They are. Right. Another guy, another Matt guy that we have to talk about. Ritter, baby. Desmond. Is he the truth? The skill position players are. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Pitts That's my, he, played one, he played one drive, and I saw Bijan make a one-handed catch. I saw Pitts make a one-handed catch, and I saw Drake <laughs> London moss someone <laughs> along the sidelines. So it's like, is Ritter good enough to throw it to these guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. Are really yeah good. I, Ritter Ritter looked fine I mean they they got down to the to the red zone it was it looked pretty easy for them and then once they were there I thought that Mike Hilton made a really good break on the ball uh was able to pop it up in the air and have it picked it wasn't a terrible throw from Ritter by any means but um just a a good play <laughs> you're asking Scotty Miller to box out and uh, against a really <laughs> physical slot corner and he got he got decked couldn't come up with a catch and it popped up and got picked so yeah. It is what it is, but man, I, I was really excited by the skill position players and, and Ritter. I mean, they marched right down the field. So can he keep it on the rails? I, I like to think that he can. He missed high once, you know, he threw behind Pitts, but Pitts was able to come down with it. Um, mm-hmm. So I I think the Falcons offense will be as advertised now as advertised may not be number one in the league because Ritter is baked into that as advertised but yeah yeah, I think that he's I think that he's going to be good enough to keep it on the rails I think that man you you have to feel like it's the Falcons division to lose with that if their offense is this good stay hot is sponsored by underdog fantasy and I don't even have a script for this one I'm speaking from the heart Underdog has so many different game modes to play. You can bet on the MLB, NFL, PGA, NHL, NBA, anything you want, and a lot of different game modes as well. Uh, If you have a fantasy league with some friends and your draft is over, but you just can't get enough of drafting a team, you can draft as many teams as you want on Underdog Fantasy. Um, 10 person, 12 person, 4 person, 6 person, it doesn't matter. You know, and any type of money that you want to put into it, you can put into it. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, a lot of different ranges of prizes and whatever you want to put into it, you can get out of it and and whatnot. So it's a really great uh, app. And with Stay Hot, you can use the code Stay Hot on the Underdog Fantasy app and get your first deposit doubled by the app. So if you put in $10, you get $20. That to me sounds like free money. So Download the Underdog app, play Pick'ems, enter a pool, and do whatever you want. Do whatever works for you. Bet on the NFL, bet on the PGA, bet on the MLB. It's it's all right there for you. So use promo code STAYHOT on the Underdog app. They'll double your deposit up to $100, I believe. And uh, yeah, can't recommend it enough. I definitely don't think it's their division to lose. It kind of implies that they're the obvious front runners, and they're not, right? That I feel like the Saints are right there, too. I guess. I just feel like the Falcons offense has a little bit more what what would I don't know if reliability is the word, but how much are we gonna Sp- trust Alvin Kamara and how much are we gonna trust Michael Thomas? I think the Falcons have it's their time almost. Like the Saints, like they've got Carr and you know, Michael Thomas is always banged up and Kamara, like you said, suspended. So it it feels like, you know, they, they were on the top or at least on yeah. top of the Falcons. And it feels like the Falcons should have surpassed them this offseason with the with the big spending and free agency and 
drafting Bijan and and everything that makes everybody so excited about the Falcons, the skill position players, the guys mm-hmm. who are there taking a leap, whether that be Ritter or, or Pitts or London. Like it feels like in terms of schedule, they should be passing people this season. Um, but it hasn't happened yet. I think, I mean, this is an NBA, <laughs> what do words mean discussion? I, I think <laughs> it's not quite their division to lose until they're the, uh, you know, yeah, I think you got to win it, it first, right probably. Now, you know, the Buccaneers won it last year yes, and then, and fair. then be, or like just be comically stacked. And I'm just not sure if their quarterback or pass rusher secondary is quite <laughs> literally their entire defense hey, is quite at that level hey, yet they have but, uh they have an ohio state legend so that's all that matters i'll be honest though watching watching them they're like london and Pitts and Bijan dunk on everybody today or yesterday that that did make me say like man i can i can see the vision for this offense absolutely yeah they're 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 really scary and everyone's going to take pits early in fantasy again, and hopefully they don't get dogged this year. <laughs> hopefully, man. I mean, he was lined up. He's lined up outside. I, I think that in twelve person, you you got to think that he's more of a receiver than a tight end. I think that that drive with the starters kind of showed that where they would have. I don't know. They're they're actual like tight end tight ends. I don't that Johnny Smith is there and Hesse. Mm-hmm. I can't quite remember if that's who was playing in line. I saw I saw Pitts line up in line, but for the most part, I think of Pitts as, as a wide receiver, and there's really not a lot of other wide receiver talent on that offense. So I think it's going to be okay for Pitts, but yeah. you just don't know after last year. But I, Pitts has my stamp. I don't know, man. He's just so so big and smooth and talented yeah. and had a 1,000 yards with Matt Ryan and stuff. So it's... I it should be pretty good. It should they shouldn't anything lower than second would be a disappointment. Yes. Yeah. I think I agree, I agree. with that. Yeah. Well, Theo, do you want to talk about Jordan Love? I know you've made a video on him. We've talked <laughs> about him quite a quite a bit in the coming months as we're preparing for his regular season debut as a starter as the full-time starter for Green Bay. Mm -hmm. What did you see from him this weekend? I've seen the same thing that I've always seen from Jordan Love, and that's just confidence. Um, That's the willingness to play in structure. I I think that he was such an unknown coming into this season for a lot of people that I – I feel like the general public just had no idea what Jordan Love is. And in the video, I tried to lay it out, and it's exactly – as I laid out in the video, it is not, there's nothing Mahomes esque about him. All right. Like there's nothing, there's no scramble. Like there is scrambling with him, but that's not what makes him good. That's not what makes me excited about him is, is that in fact, I think that's kind of his weakness is what he's done out of structure in his career and his consistency as a deep ball passer as well. Like he's, he's not this like, athlete who doesn't know how to play in structure like is he's raw like maybe that's what he was coming out of college but it's not what he's shown uh in these years in the nfl what he is in the nfl is someone who is gonna go to the right place he's in total command of the offense he's gonna hit the top of his drop and rip it like that is what jordan love is and to me that's exactly what he's shown in these preseason games um you know the the fade to Dobbs. You know after off of play action, read the ran the underneath cover coverage through a touch, and and it was, you know nothing fancy about it. Just off play action in structure touchdown. You know this this week at the top of his drop found Dobbs along the sideline, perfect throw. Um, there was a dig route he hit, I think also to Dobbs, where he hit the top of his drop. It looks like even the the corner Jack Jones had inside leverage, but. He was able to rip it with a lot of velocity, trusted Dobbs to to create even a little bit of, not even separation, but just positive body positioning over the middle of the field, put it right on his face mask that there is there. Like if you look at it on the all 22, which I don't have, but some people have. So they posted that and I saw like, man, there's not a lot of quarterbacks. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying some people have the all 22 of these preseason games? You haven't seen like everyone else post all 22. I've seen every, if someone can let me know where they're getting this all 22, but I've seen like, 
I, my my timeline has been absolutely I haven't been, with I haven't, all 22 of these games. I was moving my girlfriend in all day yesterday, so I haven't been like too what, hurt. Even stuff today, on. I can't even believe where where how fast people are getting like unless oh people are maybe posting. because um Game Pass itself moved to a different network. So maybe those people are getting them from that no, but I have no like, idea. That's like an overseas. I'm, that's like an overseas organization. So I don't know if like that's something. That we all can I know access. is on NFL Plus, it's not there. Right. So exactly. That's, uh, <laughs> and I I don't have anything else, man. So that's that's what I've got, and it's not there. So, but right. some people have it, uh, and I have it's preseason, so I haven't really bothered it. I, yeah, I, maybe I should, but. I, as long as it's there for the regular season, but at any rate, right? Jordan Love, like this, did not look open at all. Was still able to to you know make the throw confidently, quickly, rhythm pass, like totally on the money. The the touchdown to read as well. Like he scrambled a little bit. He shifted, not even a scramble, more is just like kind of shifting in the pocket, and mm-hmm. you know that was a frozen rope on time, accurate. Like I have no real doubt about love's ability to execute the offense the way it needs to be executed i have no doubt in his ability to get to the right spot and make the right throw i think it'll come down to throwing with a bit more touch the first week you saw him miss a wide open pass to musgrave just because he tried to throw with all the juice in the world and it just Mm -hmm. didn't require that much you know power behind it and when you throw it that hard you're less likely to be accurate and that's exactly what happened so you know, that's a layup that absolutely needs to be hit. Um, we haven't really seen him react to pressure yet because the Packers offensive line has actually been extremely good so far in this preseason. So like when the bullets start flying and he has to create, like, can, will he be able to do that without losing his mind? We haven't really seen too much of that yet. Um, his consistency as a deep ball thrower still need to see that. But man, as a if if Watson and Dobbs and Reed and we'll see what it looks like, like is in structure going to be good? Is there going to be anything to throw to in structure with these wide, with these wide receivers when the regular season starts? Like, I don't know, but um, I have no doubt. Like he can, like he has total command of the offense. We've seen him get some guys with even the hard count. Like I, I think that the mental side of the game is all there for him. It's just going to be accuracy and, and uh, what he can do late in the down those are my only questions about him at this my point. my concern is like you know we've seen guys come into the league and and do the instructor stuff well and then teams kind of figure that out right we saw it with golf we saw it with baker and when these guys were asked to do a little bit more they couldn't and i don't think of baker as someone who can execute like baker was executing in structure before he got hurt all right, like he was. And He's then when the they play asked, action stuff. Right, they were hit, they they were hitting he was hitting the layups, but they couldn't really rely on him to like be like be the first overall pick. Right. I my issue with Baker is like he would abandon structure too quick. Like he would hit the top of his drop and he would just like his footwork would leave him. He'd scramble all around. Like he wouldn't get through his read. Like I'm not concerned about that stuff with love. Like I don't think you're going to need to just run like AJ Dill, like get under center and just power run, power run, <laughs> power run, power run with Jordan love. Like I, and, and play action off of that. And that's the only way he can look good. I don't think I think you can run whatever offense they they want to run. I think they can get in gun. I think they can get an empty and just have them be point okay. guard. Like that's that's what he was succeeding in against the Eagles. Like just hit the top of his drop, ball out. Like I don't think I would want to run that with Baker one bit. Right. Um, I think he's better. Like going to be better than Baker uh, pretty easily and, and the, the pretty low bar. But yeah, the I think like he will be solid. The question is like, can he be spectacular? That that is yeah. what I wonder with Jordan Love because he doesn't have the same like magician quality outside the pocket as you know Rogers obviously or even some of the other guy, you know, guys like like Bryce Young. Yeah, I, I was thinking about you know if, if that's the report on Love, who is the best quarterback in the NFL that that comps to? You know, with mm-hmm. I think the best is like. Dak, you know, like Dak is someone like 
or, you know, you can be a pocket passer, you know, like I think, and I, and I think that his out of structure stuff, like, again, we have a very limited sample size. I can't right. say that he's like bad at that stuff. It's just like, I have questions about it because I haven't seen it done before. Right. So I, I think he can be just about as good as anyone. Um, not that he, well, you know, not Mahomes, or obviously, but I think that he can marry both of things up pretty well because he is athletic. Uh, but at the very least, I think he can be a good pocket passer. And, you know, Tua is a, a pocket passer, put up numbers last year. Dak's a pocket passer. Herbert's like a guy I would consider a pocket passer. Burrow's a guy I would consider like a pocket passer. You know, Mahomes, I would not consider a pocket passer, and he's the best in the league. I wouldn't consider uh, Kyler a pocket passer. So I don't know. I, I, I think that there are, you know, I think that his ceiling is very high, and I think his floor is high, and I'm, I still have questions, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about his preseason performances and uh, I can see why the Packers are excited about him and why they think they've got their guy. Do you have any concerns about the receivers still? Oh yeah, I, I totally do. I mean, they've looked good this preseason. Jaden Reed has made plays. Dobbs has made plays. Watson has been pretty quiet. Um, but you know, once the regular season starts, you know, it's, it's an unprecedented there's unprecedented youth in this group. So like, are they going to just be able to go up against vet corners and cook them week in and week out? It's like Romeo dubs didn't do that last year. You know, Watson right. did a little bit towards the end, but um, you know, it was only towards the end. And then Reed, we've never really seen him before. Musgrave, we've never really seen him before. So like, yeah, they're able to get these, these, these guys in preseason, but uh, will that be the same or will it be tough let sledding come the regular season? Like I said, I trust Love's ability to perform in structure. Will the structure be good? Because <laughs> it's like, if he's looking for the for the dig and the dig is, is blanketed, like, well, then is he going to be much use to us? So I'm still worried about the Packers offense as a whole. And it's not like a clean projection that they're going to be great. But I do think that Love can execute what the offense gives him what the offense gives him it's kind of up in the air i think that's fair yeah <clears throat> another guy that we have to talk about is i think trey lance um just because what we saw last week i don't think a was a fair shot um, it was a fair shot. What do you mean it wasn't a fair shot? I don't think it shot. was a fair shot. He was thrown out there with backups against... He is a backup. But that's... <laughs> All I'm saying is if you throw a quarterback out there with a worse team against a better... Like, the, like objectively, he was out there with a worse lineup of guys. But that's not it, unfair to him. He's the backup. He played with then the throw him, Then throw him in in the second or third quarter like they did today or or like yesterday. I guess. I think that he that's, was making – That's he was the fair playing. thing to do. If you're going to say he's a backup, okay, play him during that time. Don't be like, oh, well, we're going we're gonna to play him with the backups right away. And then when he looks bad, we're going to be like, oh, well, that's not our fault. I think I think that it was a bad situation last week against, you know, who did they play? Was it the Raiders? They played the Raiders. And the Raiders were playing their ones and the 49ers were playing their twos. That's true. That's true. But I don't think it was necessarily like unfair to judge Lance by how he played, you know? Like yeah, you you can you can still judge certain things, but as far as that that was not a proper situation to be like, oh well. No, he it's clearly, he didn't have he, Kittle. He, he didn't stinks. have right. He didn't have a lot of the things that Brock Purdy has. But still, like he struggled. And this week, I thought you know it's kind of the same story as last week, where it was a bit rough early in the in the in the day, and then led a good drive towards the end. So you know he he has been able to settle in, but um. Yeah, it was uh, it was an up and down performance. What did you? I just talked about love for so. <laughs> what did you think about Lance Bladen? I thought he looked pretty solid. Like, you know, he made some nice throws. He had the one pick that got like batted on the screen pass, but like outside of that, I, I thought he just looked more comp, more not more com more comfortable than than he did last week. There was a lot a lot of pressure that I, I don't think he was really ready for last week. 
And this week I thought he was, you know, a little bit more calm in the pocket when he did have to extend plays. He was able to, um, I, I, I thought it was a lot more poise, a lot more confidence. And, and it's, I think a good start to like, you know, if, if they're going to start Purdy fine, but like, you got to do something with Lance, whether it's trade him or you don't, <laughs> you don't have to do any, you could stick Lance at third string and I guess you Arnold could. even, and they could just play the whole season. They could cut Lance, you know, like, I guess, yeah, they could cut Lance. Um, but I, I would think you would to, like to at least, I think you would like to at least try and see if, you know, if, if we can get some value in him, you know, then maybe we yeah. can get, get some value back. Uh, but I, th- I thought he looked solid today. It, you know, considering he was with, I thought, in more a more reasonable matchup. Yeah, more balanced across the board. Yeah. You got to do something with him eventually, but you don't right. have to do something with him like right now, Matt. Yeah. You... I don't know, man. I mean, how many young quarterbacks right now like are showing flashes? Like a hundred percent of, of them. them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, my opinion on his development has not changed. I thought, yeah, he was warming up. He was getting through the game. This looks like a guy who has not played a lot of football games. And by God, he hasn't. So I, I think he's got a lot of tools. But I think at the end of the day, dude, like this guy, Shanahan just doesn't like him, I don't think. I think Shanahan's like pissed that this hasn't worked out. Yeah, That's yeah. the vibe that I get. Wasn't I mean, the initial report that Shanahan did not want that Shanahan wanted um, Mac Jones, but everyone else wanted Lance? Yeah, that's that has always been the reporting is that Shanahan liked Jones and got Lance, and Lance kind of ran a Shanahan-y type of offense at NDSU. So I always kind of thought like it makes sense that they took him. Like it, it really does. I, I understand the gamble, but you know he the COVID year and getting mm-hmm. sitting for a year and getting hurt. It's like, you just need the same deal as last week. So I don't want to spend too much time yeah, on it. He needs the reps and, and no one at this point is going to trade for him and have him learn a whole new offense in a, in what a week, <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. So it's like, right. this year is probably going to be another lost year for him. And he'll probably like the most likely scenario is he gets traded and then he's in another quarterback competition on a, on a team next year and you know a lot of quarterbacks drafted high don't make it and maybe and like right now that's the path that lance is on is like yeah not it, it not working out but he, he is you're right that he hasn't had like a real sh- not a real shot because i guess this year he was in an open competition and he lost so he has been in it but uh you know it's it's not he needs reps and yeah like, he just doesn't have this That's isn't a, the team to get reps with because they're in a Super Bowl window right now so it's like yep. a different situation would be better for him it's not like he's never ever had a chance but he hasn't had a chance in an ideal situation so we'll yeah. see we'll see what happens next year with him but for now I think you know Purdy's going to be the starter Lance you know he's got a He's got to play somewhere some at some time, and I'm sure that he'll get out of San Francisco eventually. But uh, it's yeah. uh, not looking good for Lance and San Fran. No, it's not. Cisco. I'm sorry. I know San Francisco people get mad when people say San Fran. Do they? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't heard of that. They I said them. Ronnie Bell. I said a friend of mine. Hey, yes. <laughs> He's good. Yes, he is good. He did cook. He had one... He had one drop. He's like 100 yards. He's that got picked. Like it went right through his hands, hit his helmet, went up in the air and got picked. But like outside of that, he was he was money. All right, everyone, we're going to take a quick break to talk about some basketball. Remember those unforgettable NBA moments? Well, get ready to create your own epic plays with NBA 2K Mobile. I just downloaded the game, got the Cleveland Cavaliers as my team, and You get to open these packs right away. And the first player I got in my pack, De'Aaron Fox. So I'm already set to win the whole thing. This really is the mobile game for real basketball fans. You can immerse yourself in the ultimate basketball gaming experience on your mobile device, collect player cards, build a custom powerhouse team, and rise to the top just like me. Because I already have the best player in the world, De'Aaron Fox. You can set up your team on the court, showcase all your skills, climb to the leaderboards, and become a basketball legend. Best of all, 
It's free to play on your mobile device. So go ahead, download NBA 2K Mobile free on the App Store or Google Play and use our promo code TATUM2KMOBILE to redeem an exclusive Jason Tatum Pearl Tier card. That's code T-A-T-U-M-2K Mobile, M-O-B-I-L-E. And get NBA 2K Mobile, get that Jason Tatum card. Maybe you'll get a deer and fox just like me and you can... Be just like me and have the best team in the world. He, he's got wheels, and I think he's got a pretty good feel for the game. It's obviously kind of a little hard to tell with wide receivers. But he had a lot of yards. Hey. <laughs> hard to argue with that. Well, when we have you guys watched, two, everything will come out. Have you guys watched Aiden O'Connell at all? I'm going to be real with no, you. I did not. <laughs> this is all so. you if you want to talk about him. Uh, he's been my number one most requested guy to talk about, and <laughs> he was good. I didn't watch him week one, but I watched him last night against the the Rams, and it there were shades of twenty twenty one Brady. Man, it was uh, Stop. <laughs> not that that well. There were like for, I think like if you look at the aggressiveness, that's what really stands out to me like how far he was throwing down the field his average depth of target i think was like 11 yards which is really far justin herbert was at six last year so he's really bombing it down the field he's being super super aggressive he's testing tight windows he's throwing with anticipation um he's stopping guys with the ball Uh, he has looked like a very good in pocket operator um there were two bad moments last night. There was one, the f- first play he was in for, he had a guy wide open down the field. I mean, free touchdown on a go route, like no one within five yards of him. There was someone following him, but he wasn't even close. And the ball was underthrown. It was, I mean, I talk about Bryce Young missing by inches or missing by yards. This was a miss by several yards, like on a, on a free touchdown. So that was bad. And then there was one play where he kind of forced a ball on an in breaker, the corner was totally sitting on it. He had inside leverage post snap and he still just forced it in there. Um, they were interviewing Raheem Morris at the time, the Rams defensive court. I think it was Raheem Morris. I guess I didn't see it. He got so excited at the defensive play though, that it kind of made me seem like they must be talking to the offensive court defensive coordinator. Um, but it was, it was almost jumped and he was like, Oh my God, oh, I almost had that one. So that was a turnover worthy play. But outside of that, I thought, um, as an in-pocket operator, he looked very, very strong, and that's the kind of like archetype that Josh McDaniels tends to like outside of the one year Cam Newton was there, although Cam Newton can be a better pocket operator than, than a lot of people remember. But uh, yeah, I, I thought that that was all really impressive, but the problem is like you can just tell that he can't move around. Like when he's, he's If you were to mark with an X all the places that he threw the football, it's going to be in a circle like right behind the center which is fine like you need to be able to do that like you absolutely have to be able to just drop back and throw those are probably 90 i mean you said 2021 brady those are probably 90 percent of brady's throws this is what you're saying matt with love like how many people are in the archetype like it's not many like people who can't move around love i know he can move around he's athletic is he good at throwing when he's moving around i don't know but but you know, kind of, they sent him on a bootleg and like a lot of the times it looks so easy for guys like Bryce or, or Richardson or even Stroud to outrun the end man on the line of scrimmage on a bootleg. You know, Connell can't do that, man. Like he can't, <laughs> oh, he can't, no. he can't escape the contain. So, you know, he had to throw it away, you know, like he's, he's just not fast. He's not someone who can do anything yeah. like on the move. And it's like, how many young hey, quarterbacks? Even Peyton Manning hit a bootleg once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that he did, but, uh, no, if it's did. blocked he, well, he had that one. It was like we're really wide, and he ran him for a touchdown. He barely made it, but oh, right, right, ran for the <laughs> touchdown. I'm like, I'm sure if Peyton has thrown a billion bootlegs in his life, it's just he can't really outrun anybody on those yeah, plays. And that's he, the he same thing it. with O'Connell. Barely. So like O'Connell is limited, and like the early 2000s mold of passer is like, I just don't know how many of those guys like as good starters we're going to see again, like you got to be able to move around a, at least a little bit, but, right. um, and, and I don't know if O'Connell can do that, but man, like 
throwing down the field with anticipate like all the things you if it was the year 2000 i'd be really hyped about it <laughs> it's just it's just not so we'll see what that means and i'd like to see him get reps a little bit earlier in the game because he's still behind hoyer on the depth chart and he still came in after hoyer in the game so That's i'd like fair. to see him play a little bit a little bit earlier against better competition mm-hmm. as well tanner mckee is kind of the same way yeah and why he played really him. well he did yeah he had some really nice passes um he probably had three sort of those like back shoulder fades down the sidelines that were like ridiculously placed. I mean, just totally on the money. He was thrown into some tight windows. Uh, he was at least stepping up in the pocket a little bit. He is also very slow and is very much a, okay, here's the pressure. Oh, My yeah. pocket's gone. I'm going to get rid of the ball now. Mm. But there's a place for a guy like that um, as a backup. I think he I think he will be the Eagles backup. Well, he can't be worse than Mariota, man. That was rough. <laughs> Mariota stinks. It's a tough one. And now people realize what was holding Pitts back and what was holding this offense back last year. It was Marcus. But you know I who feel doesn't like it's have been a, Oh, go ahead. I, I just want to say like one more one more note about maybe the quarterbacks, unless you have something else about the quarterbacks played in. But I have one other quarterback I want to talk about, but I feel like they've all looked okay. I mean, Stroud kind of rebounded this week, which is good. Mm-hmm. He was able to make some nice throws on the move. They were actually giving yeah. him good pockets. He was able to to make some throws outside the numbers and led a scoring drive where he, you know, completed a bunch of passes in a row. You know, nothing too too crazy, but that was good to see. I we talked about Richardson last week. I think he looked mm-hmm. good. I think Bryce has looked mm-hmm. good. I think Levis has looked like not perfect, but like okay, you know everyone's yeah. like I don't no Sh- Dorian Thompson Rob Robinson has looked really good, McKee has looked really good, even Clifford has looked like pretty good. So I, I feel like it's so how much weight can we really put into like these rookie quarterbacks or young Zero. quarterbacks all looking like none like okay none at all dude. in preseason right yeah like none. <laughs> but if we're I talking think- about guys like McKee and like um o'connell that can't move at all someone that can move that we also played was uh jake hayner that man kind of nuts he's kind of nice with it they had like three plays in a row on in the red zone where hayner threw a touchdown and it either got dropped or there was a penalty and then he went out. I think they had to like fix his helmet or something. And then Jameis came in and they had another touchdown get called back for a penalty. But bro, Hannah was making some nice throws from the pocket on the run. He had one that was almost intercepted and probably should have been. But I mean, he was, I thought he was letting it rip for a decent amount. As you talk about like guys that are throwing with confidence, like DTR, like O'Connell, he was doing all of that, but he was, you know, he was also had that DTR like moving around and making plays, making plays with his legs. He looked, he looked really solid. And I thought he looked solid at Fresno State too. So I'm not like totally shocked that he, that he looks like this. But man, I mean, he's cooking a little bit. I thought I thought that yeah he looked he looked very competent he had a really nice throw on a on a seam route and by the time the ball yeah. got there the the spacing was wild like it looked like he threw it and there was <laughs> are like you talking about the one Saints where receivers. it was like or was it the one to the tight end yes we yeah, was like it was the tight end he was like going and by out the time the, and he threw it like back in I was like ugh. I don't know if I remember that. I remember just kind of that vertical release and he was open and he ripped it up the seam. But then by the time the ball got there, people like a bunch of receivers and defensive backs that kind of con- converge. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a Kenny Pickett throw. Don't listen to me. Oh. That, that was a Kenny very, Pickett throw. <laughs> very different. You know, that was nice. Uh, the, the first play was nice where he was able to roll to his right and throw it accurately. Um, and that was an explosive play. I thought that he was missing high. He missed Brian Edwards uh, above Brian Edwards a couple times, and Brian Edwards mm. is a huge dude. Uh, there was a play where he had, I think it was Edwards again, um, running open vertically, and he just threw an absolute bullet. And it's like, let him. This was something Fouts mentioned on the broadcast, and I couldn't agree more. Like, let him run under it, you know, put some arc on that thing. Uh, so, 
that there were some maybe some accuracy issues but yeah i think overall it's been a pretty solid performance from hannery through a pretty bad pick week one but uh it was kind yeah. of a lackadaisical route as well so um yeah i i think that he's he's performed about up to my expectations hasn't totally killed it but um yeah, so yeah I, I think that he's he's looked good for for what he is yeah I, he could definitely i mean Jameis is fine but i think you could definitely see like putting him in you know in earlier in the game to try and get a get a more uh competitive look but it, it anyway. i mean Derek's gonna be your starter so it doesn't really matter yeah Enough who about else? the quarterbacks. <laughs> Enough, Enough about, about the it. quarterbacks. Who else have you guys seen this weekend that that you thought put together a nice performance? I I thought you guys were talking about, or maybe it was just Theo that was talking about one of the running backs had a really nice outing. I don't I don't know what running back uh, I was. Bijan looked really. I good. mean, other than Bijan, oh I thought Tank guys, Bigsby. Oh, I thought yes. Tank Bigsby had a good performance, and you can check out my TikTok if you want to see what. I'm not going to talk about him again because I yeah, already did that. But it. redirect people. I, I'll open the floor to you guys. I, I I've got one thing I want to talk about. But I watched some um, Roshan Johnson. I was interested mm-hmm. in him coming out of Texas. He still looks very big and, and powerful, and he had a lot of you know. Here comes this like you know backup safety coming to tackle me, and then it's like hitting a brick wall, you know. People aren't getting through them. There are probably two or three plays of that. That was, you know, always awesome to see. But I, I liked um, I liked Roshan because he's very north south, and he was still north south. But there was a decent amount of hesitation on him, where I think the decision to make was very clear. It's a second preseason game. I don't want to read too too much into that. But I was seeing a lot of really impressive stats about like. Oh, his um, yards after contact is really high, which of course it is. Uh, And that it's, you know, one of the most important running back stats for sure. But uh, sometimes the contact was happening a little bit sooner than I think maybe it had to. Um, And that's not necessarily because he's going at guys. Rather, he's, there was just a couple of plays where he's a hair indecisive. But I I think, I think I really like the Bears running back room. Overall, Herbert, Foreman. Roshan Johnson, I see what they're trying to do there. And I also like how much they they um, get fullbacks in the mix. I forgot how often uh, they'd put a fullback out there, but there was definitely like a good number of plays. And it's like, it's not like, oh, goal line shit. It's we're putting a fullback out there for mm-hmm. the sake of putting a fullback out there because we want to lead blocker. We're going to go at you. It's like, all right, that with Foreman and Roshan, like that's that's some that's some good old football. So that is the the power running game and mm-hmm. all that. Another team that did that that I noticed was the Broncos. Um, yes, check them out yes. this week with, with Javante uh, Williams. Number, yeah, number twenty exactly as we predicted. You know, like what this offense is going to look like is um, get power run and then limit what Wilson has to do. And we yeah. saw that with Javante and and I don't know the fullbacks Pierre, name. Is it Janovich still? It can't be. They were they were running That's with P pull. Ryan a lot. <laughs> Number 20 Broncos. I saw I one play call, Ryan though, that I never, play. ever, ever want to see again from the Broncos. And if they ever run this, I will personally... I'm in Denver, so I can go... I can give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> they were under center, and they ran a three-step drop back with Russ. <laughs> and if you can imagine the scene, under if you're in shotgun and you run a three-step drop, you're, you're a ways behind the offensive line, right? If you're under center and you run a three-step drop, you're not very far, far behind the offensive line at all. And it's like, what no. is five foot eleven Russ gonna do standing this directly breeze, behind the center and both guys, both guards? And then he scrambled, um, obviously, and yeah, and that was fine. But it's like, just I never want to see him do that again, ever, ever, ever. So no, no more straight dropbacks from under center. If you're under center, either play action it or ran the football off. But I, that could maybe be a problem because if you're going to be under center, you know, maybe you don't want to be quite that predictable. <laughs> but with Russ, it's like, I kind of think that you have to be. How tall, I, I, I mean, never Drew Brees was like 5'11", 6 foot. They did that with him. So. Look, Drew Brees is different. Look, <laughs> Drew Brees and Russ <laughs> look, 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 at this it, point in their careers, we know that they can't play the same. <laughs> I'm just saying, as far as like dropping back directly behind the center, like... This is why you shouldn't judge player by their physicals. You should judge them by what they can do, I think. 
this is my new take. Like, I agree with you. It's like, how can Breeze do it and, and Wilson do it? Well, it's harder to do it when you're short, but Breeze can and Wilson can't. <laughs> you right. know, or like mm -hmm. Ivan Pace, for example. It's hard to be a good NFL player at that size, but Ivan Pace is or will be. <laughs> It's like hard to be, you know, like right. show NFL traits or do certain things at a certain size. But if a guy is doing them, then they are mm -hmm. doing them, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Breeze, Breeze would get up on his tiptoes of... and just barely do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bryce is better at it than, than, than mm -hmm. Russ is. It's, yeah. and that's, is that's a great Bryce example. It's like young. he just can. Yeah. It's why that, I don't I mean, like the... The Bryce to Russ, I, I tweeted today that Bryce reminds me of like kind of a discount, smaller, like less of an arm Rogers. Sorry, Matt, but he's not Aaron Rodgers quite. No, I, I, my comp for him was my comp was always my comp was always Breeze. I thought he, Breeze can't move around like that though. Not yeah. not when he was not not in 2019 he Stop. couldn't, <laughs> but he could move a little <laughs> bit. No, he like couldn't. He couldn't move like Bryce can. Under but over like, on Breeze career rushing yards. <laughs> if you count sacks, it's probably in the negative. <laughs> I thought don't sacks count against passing yards, not rushing yards? They should, but sometimes you see some wild like I know that w Will Levis had like negative three hundred rushing yards in his career <laughs> because of the sacks. So. That might just be how they counted in college, but I'm and I don't know how they do. counted it back in the day, but hopefully yeah. it was in the passing games. But he really reminds me of Little Rogers. But anyway, I want to talk about a different unit from the Panthers Giants game, and that was the starting Giants offense. Um, I thought that drive was crazy impressive. I get that it's preseason, but every when they scored that touchdown to Bellinger, every single play was a pass. Every single one. And there was one that was like one of those jet passes to Hyatt, which is like mm -hmm. technically like it might as well be an end around. It might as well be a run, but technically it's a pass, but still they didn't really hand the ball off to a running back on that drive. And they only took one three-step drop. So there was no really traditional passing concepts and there weren't any runs, but everything worked. It was just Kafka and Dable in their bag. Like there was an RPO to Richie James. That was really good. Plenty of, uh, play action get, you know get jones moving flood one side of the field let him make a, a read in terms of like what level he wants to throw to um they were really getting waller involved isolating yeah. him uh, on one side and letting him win some slant routes or putting him in the slot and they were just peppering him with targets and then on the last play the touchdown play they had him and bellinger on the same side of the field waller ran a route and Bellinger blocked. And because they had been peppering Waller so much, of course he draws, you know, two guys and then Bellinger leaks out. He's wide open. They used Waller as a decoy and Bellinger scored the touchdown. And I was like, Oh, that's so unfair. That's so unfair. And yeah, to, to, to just kind of cook entirely with play calling like that, like they kind of took the line out of the equation with how fast they were getting rid of the ball and play action where the line goes one way and the play develops the other way. Like they really weren't even asking anything of Daniel Jones. Obviously he's got to hit the throws and make the reads and stuff, but it yeah. wasn't anything too crazy from him. It wasn't anything too crazy from the line. It wasn't too crazy from, at, for, from, at, for anyone. It was just a lot of attention to detail and you know, they, they just, they were a buzzsaw. They they totally yeah. killed the Panthers defense. Von Bell had the one nice play where he came down and rocked to Waller and he dropped it. But outside of that, that was that was the only successful thing the Panthers defense did. And the Panthers defense If is Waller weak. can stay healthy, man, they're they're gonna have some real nice work on off and some some real explosives this year in the passing game. There's a lot of reasons or statistical reasons to believe the Giants will regress. And I just think they're going to be one of those teams that defies it. I just think they've got the coaching staff. I think Kafka will be a head coach next year. Bangles I think Dable is that dude. I think that they've got, I think that they've, I think that they've got the guys to run this scheme. And I think that the offense is going to look better than it did last year. Like I get that they made the playoffs with a negative point differential. I think the point differential will be positive. Right. Kayvon played I, well. Th this is, this is the thing about those. It's like, I, I believe in the regression stuff to some extent, but it can't be the entirety of how you view a team. It's like, you can, if, if they had won seven games last year, 
I'd still probably think they're going to be pretty good right now. They happen to be a little bit ahead of schedule and get some breaks, but that's not anything against them this year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Bengals were the same way. And it's like, everyone was like, Oh, the Bengals Super Bowl hangover. They're going to regress. And right. They, they Cause were, their offense was like, good. what fit it, their offense last year was like 16th or two years ago, two years ago. Now it was like 16th or 17th in a lot of these metrics. And obviously they go to the Super Bowl. And, you know, my thought process was like, well, they went to the Super Bowl, but you know, their, their offense didn't quite match it. So like, they'll come back down to earth a little bit, but instead it was just a young team that was ahead of schedule. And then instead of regressing, their numbers just got better with time because all their, their, they've got a young quarterback who can like play better, better. (laughs) who is capable of playing better. And I think that Daniel Jones is capable of playing better. And again, I don't think that this is going to be an offense where it's like, you know, he's dropping back, slicing and dicing everybody uh, like down the field. Like, I, I don't think he's going to be that. I think it's going to be a lot of, you know, RPO play action stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that he can hit more deep shots than he did last year. And and if he can do that, you know, with the numbers he made last year, like he can be a, a, syst- a good system quarterback. And uh, I, I, I just think they're more than the sum of their parts. Absolutely. And I, I Jalen Hyatt I had a really, really nice, really nice route when um was who was throwing was that uh that was tyrod when tyrod was throwing and he tyrod took this huge hit as he let to go the ball high arcing and hyatt just like pushes straight to the depth of this defender that's like 15 yards down the field and then he just breaks and when he broke off of this to cut to the to corner the corner of the end zone his acceleration was just ungodly. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. that the Giants didn't have that last year. <laughs> and Tyrod also pony. made a great throw. Tyrod also made a great throw. He's a one trick pony, but it's a but hell it's of a, a trick. It's a great trick, man. <laughs> I get it. I get Blayden, it. I know you watched uh, Steelers versus Bills. Were you at all concerned as a Browns fan to watch the. Uh... Yes. The uh, Steelers tear apart the Bills starters. I'm my my main concern isn't even that the Steelers look good in preseason. It's that they have so much energy, like they are just energetic, excited to be there. And I'm like, that's going to carry over into that's the regular Tomlin, season, dude. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I hate it. No, they they look great. <laughs> they look great, man. Um. I mean, they have Watt back. I mean, there's play. Watt's getting like triple teamed by the Bills' offensive line on on a lot of plays. He's just he's so good. He's gonna be so hard to block. Um, Warren had a really nice run for a touchdown where it didn't look like he was gonna outrun Poyer, and then somehow he did. I I don't get it, man. This this team always is good no matter what. If Pickett continues to if Pickett's making throws like he was today or not today this weekend the, during the regular season, they're going to be crazy. I mean, their offense is going to be really, really good. The throw that when we were talking about uh Hainer, I was, I referenced a Kenny Pickett throw to Pat mm-hmm. Fryermuth, who was running up the seam and Fryermuth was expecting this throw like over his shoulder on his right side. And he has Jordan Poyer closing on the left side and Pickett throws it like right at Poyer's head. But Fryermuth is in front of Poyer. So Poyer has to stop and Fryermuth is running still so he can catch it and run Poyer over into the end zone. It's crazy, man. I'm like, that placement, you could not, you couldn't have put it any better. Like, yeah, they were they were explosive. Jalen Warren, he was someone who performed well in limited action last year. He ripped off a 62 yard touchdown, and I think that Najee's, I don't think Najee's ever ripped <laughs> off a 60 yard run. No, yeah, uh, not, no, not that I can remember. I don't know if I've ever seen Najee rip off like a 30 yard run. Well, I just I just watched run. Warren like hit the hole, and I was like, oh wow, they had a running back like hit the hole at full speed. When it's we haven't seen that since like. <laughs> Right, right. And I, I like Najee. I, I don't want that to be Najee. No, I, I've, I've kind of turned the corner on Najee. I like Najee. I, although too. I do think that, that the Najee Harris isn't quite there. Career long, 25 yards. <laughs> Last year, his, his long was 19 yards. I'm sorry. I think I misread that. That might be his receiving long. 
It is. It's 37 and 36 in the last <laughs> Not two years. 37 yards. It's like that's so respectable, no, never... but like usually elite running backs can rip off a couple 40-yard runs a season. Yeah, Nick Chubb, um, Nick Chubb so... usually rips off a couple 90-yard ones. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, it's got a few W against agenda the, got a, pushing. <laughs> got a few against the Ravens, one against the Falcons. But yeah, if they can, if they can add a little bit of an element of explosiveness in their offense with Warren or Calvin Austin or whoever it yeah. is, that that's that's going to be a big boon for him. Calvin Austin also returned a, a yeah, he had a really nice return, fifty yards. Yeah, so. So that's good. And then, oh my God, their edge rushing group. Like Alex, like who's Alex Highsmith coming out of the draft? Oh, and now Highsmith had, sick. he had one play where he came off the edge, initial, initi- initiated the pressure on Josh Allen. Josh Allen scrambles out to his left, sees he can't do anything, comes back right. And guess who finishes the sack? Alex Highsmith. I'm like, what are we talking about? I, and then I believe Herbig, I was hyping just... up Highsmith at one point earlier this year and was told that he was weak and he was not worthy. <laughs> I think I very specific. I, so, uh, so who do you guys Her- think the best uh, pass rushing duo in the league could possibly be? It'll still be the Browns. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> They're the best pass rushing quintuplet probably. <laughs> but um, yeah. But I was I'm like Highsmith, they they developed him into a sec big second contract guy, and then you get Herbeg out there out of Wisconsin, and he's he got crazy bend and he's been just lighting it up these last two preseason games. It's like, man, these guys just they're just such a machine. And yeah. it's like and they fly. They, they all fly, and it's like motor constantly. I'm like I'm like, no Steelers one first of all, like, no one plays like that in preseason is the thing. Right? But like yeah. the fact that the Steelers are playing like that now. That makes me think they'll start off pretty hot. They looked they looked really, really good this preseason. <laughs> and who knows? It's preseason, but yeah, you know, right. it's just a team that just reliably they look better than they did last year. And yes. um they were had a winning record of last year. So ah, man, it's just so hard to pick a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a it's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be a dog this, fight. And like every team is going to have a winning record. It's, they're still the worst team on paper, but man, you you just never know. It's like the the Falcons, every single one of their or not the Falcons, different bird team, the Ravens, every single one of their star players is like made out of glass. So could it yeah. be them? You know, right. that, that could definitely happen. Could it be the Browns if Watson doesn't get off to a hot start against the defense? Like it could be. Yeah. Um, I, the Bengals are the one team I'm marking as safe from finishing last in that division. That's what I'll say. But I probably man, agree. The other three teams, it's like who? Someone's got to. Here's the other thing: the Steelers' offensive line looked good today too. Yeah, like Pickett yeah, had time. Looked... Pickett had time. They were creating space in the run game. Like they that see... Warren, that long Warren touchdown, gaping hole. And the difference is that Warren actually hit it, and I don't, Najee just doesn't hit those that hard. <laughs> but like, yeah. But they yeah, look they, great. Look, they look really good. Every they, they, I gotta they give really them credit. It. Like I, I gave my record prediction for them. Like I thought they would start off slower because I'm like, oh, they they got some new pieces. They need to get their ducks in a row, new corners. But I'm like, they they they're just playing with so much intensity right now. I that might have been a, that might have been a bad. I might end up regretting that. We'll see though. Yeah, we and then the see. other guy I want to sh- shout out is is Nolan Smith. He mm. had a couple really good reps versus the Eagles or, uh, versus the Browns um, off play action. He was really quick to recognize uh, what was going on. He didn't pursue the running back. He just went right for DTR. Got his hands up, forced mm-hmm. an overthrow, uh, ran around Dewan Jones a couple times. Was able to lift up his hands, lift up the punch, and dip his shoulder and get right around and force uh, DTR to step up into his sack. You saw the burst to track down. I think it was Anthony Schwartz in the backfield on an end around. Um, overall, a, a really solid day for him. He came up at one point with his hand hurt. I haven't seen any updates on that, but because I haven't seen any updates, it makes me think it's not a big deal. Right. The the one cave or the set of caveats would be number one, tracking down Anthony Schwartz. He's fast. He's not that shifty. He doesn't really make guys miss. Well, he not- ran him down from behind. Okay. Okay. 
I'm, it was fast. He changed direction and ran him down. And Anthony Schwartz was dealing with. I'm just saying. In front normally, of him, so normally when to, so, normally when I when someone makes a play on Anthony Schwartz, I'm not moved. <laughs> well, yeah, Anthony Schwartz has had a brutal, brutal preseason, but um, he actually he wasn't awful against Phil. That was like he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He wasn't off. We caught a couple of passes, and I'm like, norm. I'm like, normally you drop those, but I'm not getting my hopes up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you are. Um, and I think then that's a fair way to look at it. Yeah, <laughs> and then he had Nolan. Nolan. Uh, Nolan Smith is like the fastest edge rusher in the NFL right now, and he's going against like the slowest tackle but he's also the biggest tackle yeah. <laughs> so like it, it's like oh well he can go up against bigger guys but also it's like well he can kind of just run around this one how's it gonna go when he's going against like i don't right, a, a, right. a real tackle that can like get back <laughs> quick <laughs> but right yeah there wasn't any kind of element of power to his game it was just kind of like oh i can run right around this guy but he did you know <laughs> right like, if yeah, he goes so. up against attack there are a lot of bad linemen out there you know there it's are like everybody has a bookend tackle so but, so if he can if he can win those matchups and his but that's his what uh jadavion clowney thought and he still wasn't getting those matchups so <laughs> right but yeah, I, I don't have too much more to say about a uh, week two. So. I'll give I'll give a shout out to Jonathan Cooper, Gehenna Gehenna High School and Ohio State legend. Um, had a sack on Brock Purdy and then made a had a nice pressure against Darnold. He wasn't. It was kind of just like free off the edge, but he closed the gap quickly. Um, and Brock tried to hit him with a spin move, and he wrapped up nicely. So right. So got a got a shout out, shut my up. boy. Tonight, Peyton Turner. Peyton Turner is a first-round pick that I really liked out of Houston. It was considered a reach. I was like, it's not a reach. He's good, <laughs> and he's just not panned out. But tonight, he was absolutely hooping against the Chargers' um, backup offensive line. So it's like he forced a fumble. The Chargers' you know, backup the bull rush line, was, which was he was getting pushed on the bull rush. He, great last year. He was able to to survive, you know, he showed strength up the arc. He was able to get pressure that way. I thought it was a very good performance from him. And I'm like, man, there's still something in there, like, yeah. for a team that desperately needs him to work out because their front seven is bad. It's like, maybe, because <laughs> he's been injured, you know, so yeah, maybe there's something there. But yeah, I'm not getting my hopes up too, too high, but I'm not totally out on Peyton Turner yet either. Fair enough. Matt? Anyone else you want to shout out? Not off the top of my head, although I will say Drew Brees, 750 career rushing yards on 500 hey. attempts, not counting hey. sacks. Hey. I believe we Bryce move. Young can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. But, but I would take the we'll under tell. on his rushing yards this year. I don't think he'll rush for quite on as Drew many Brees. as maybe people think. <laughs> the under yeah. on Drew Brees rushing fast. yards. I don't oh, know if I've he has had, a line. He's not playing. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would but. bet the under on it, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we have for you then. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's been an absolute blast talking about the preseason. We'll continue recapping it as it happens. And we're getting closer and closer to regular season football. Super pumped right around the corner. But until then, until the next episode, we will catch you guys on the flippity flop. <laughs> <laughs>